it's been 24 hours or so now since Liz has left and I'm on my own. <laughs> this is London in the spring. I'm going to share a little secret with you. It's freezing cold and it's very dark. There are some things that in boating you're never quite comfortable with. is for Lewisham. The next stop is Canary Wharf. We knew we'd have to get a new mainsail before heading off to Indonesia, so we called Phil. He's based in Langkawi, he's from New Zealand originally, and he makes sails. My name is uh, Phil Auger. I represent a brand called uh, Zoom Sail. I'm a sailmaker originally from New Zealand. I have about uh, 16 years experience sail making and owned my own uh, small sail loft in New Zealand for 10 years. At ZoomSail we work together with OEM sail manufacturers so we, we design and engineer the sails. They're made pri primarily at a production facility in Sri Lanka uh, but we also use other OEM manufacturers uh, who build sails to our exact designs and engineering standards. We also know quite a lot about him because we know he's at his partner and we know a lot of people who've used Phil and have been really, really happy with the results. Uh, we work a little bit together with uh, Jamie from Totem, who is also a sailmaker and a cruising sailor. So we've put a lot of thought over the last three years on how we can improve and improve the durability and performance of cruising sails for cruisers. So as soon as we got to Langkawi, Jamie called him and he was there in an instant. That's probably, where was that rip? Possibly why you why you get rips in this area is so. The hood decker on, uh, whenever we see 25, 20 year old sails, uh, hood is quite common and they used to make the Decron in an island but uh, they don't anymore for some reason so unfortunately it was very high quality but unfortunately we can't get it anymore. We looked closely at a lot of different uh, cruising fabrics. We've tested uh, all the different fabrics for UV, for uh, flutter, stretch after flutter uh, and uh, come up with their own ideas of uh, what fabrics are best suited to the uh, around the world cruiser or tropical cruiser. Oh, and she can, oh. you can rip it pretty, pretty easily. You can, mm. you can start it, you know, you can wow. start the rip from it. From a raw edge. Wow. Um, so that lost about, I think it was about 70% of its strength after six months in the sun. He talked to us about the sails, our current sails, made the decision it was probably best while he was there to measure all four, because ultimately we do need four new sails. Just, just laid it off, just close the clutch there, yeah. It's a little bit of a job, good fun in the hot sun, which I'm really missing today. Right there, that, that's Canary Wharf Tower right behind me. Okay, we just have a quick word here about the sails. You do know, of course, that the main sail had a rip in it because I had to uh, sew that back together a few weeks ago. And while we were doing that, we discovered there were quite a few other areas where it was thinning and it was about to rip. So we knew we had to change the mainsail if we were to go on our journey around Sumatra. So while Phil was there, he decided to have a look at all the sails and quote with the whole lot, why not? He was there, he had time. The mizzen turned out was in as bad a condition as the mainsail and it ripped as we took it down. The foresail, our Yankee, I had mended that by hand back in the Maldives and we've been sailing with it ever since in that condition. And although it was okay, it too is on its very much on its way out. And finally the stay sail, which funnily enough is the one that we thought was the most damaged, turned out to be the least damaged, so the actual fabric wasn't quite as worn as the other sails, but it's very baggy, very misshapen. So we asked Phil if he'd quote for that one as well. <laughs> Anyway, he took, he took the measurements, he went away, and the next day he came back with a quote for all four sales. Uh, it's been a busy day. I have managed to book a place in the marina for tomorrow because we've got Adnan, uh, Adnan, Ad, Adnan, Ad, Adnan, Adnan, the fridge repairman has said that he would be able to come and see me tomorrow to have a look at our big fridge which is not working correctly and on top of that now that we've seen phil we have agreed on the sales and we have decided that we are going to get all four 
new sales. It's time to go into the marina and I'm gonna share a little secret with you. I hate going into marinas. Based upon early experience when we first got the boat and a couple of uh, close calls and one disaster, when we left Krabby Marina a few weeks ago, uh, it was horrible because we had a side wind and the one person who was trying to throw us our lines didn't really know what he was doing and with the tide and the side wind anyway it was it was terrible it was only thanks to Liz who was able to lean over and fend us off one of the piles that we stopped us from scraping ourselves we got caught it just makes me nervous Esper doesn't really reverse in a straight line we don't have a bow thruster so it's always uh, a little bit of a fraught time going in and of course today I'm on my own Fortunately, our friend Barry is in there and he's able to phone through to a guy called Toby who said he'd be uh, kind enough to have someone in a dinghy. And uh, this is what normally happens in the med. You'd have a marinaro, they're called, someone in the dinghy who'll push the boat round should you catch a side wind and they can help push you into the slip. So as I say, I've only ever been in this marina uh, once and it was a few years ago, so I don't really know what it's like and I've no idea if there's any tidal influence or if there's any wind so uh, I'm just being cautious and nervous at the same time and that is after 10 years of going in and out marinas so it just goes to show you that uh, there are some things that in boating you're never quite comfortable with and uh, this is one of them but I've got Millie on my side so we'll be good Well, we're in and it all went smoothly, nice big open space. So as it was, there was no tide, there was no wind and it was all good. And I think it was really actually down to Millie. So, you comfortable there, Millie? We're safe now, aren't we? We're sitting comfortably, so I guess it's time for a question. Yeah, we've got a good one from Deborah Taylor from Facebook. She said to us, couple of days ago what do you do if a storm is forecast? Whilst we're in Thailand and northern Malaysia we have access to a weather service called TMD which is a radar base stations around this area which literally monitor the actual movement of precipitation and cloud cover. So this shows you in real time uh, movements of massive cloud across the land and across sea and it's updated once every 20 minutes so it means that we can keep an eye on real time movement of immediate weather that's happening. For normal uh, forecasts, five day forecasts, the NOAA data forecast, they're not going to pick up on localised weather systems. And that's big round here, isn't it? Because the Malacca yeah. Strait is renowned for the huge winds that will suddenly pick up within really 20 minutes. So you have to use your senses to work out if you think something's heading our way because it'll, ha it'll happen very quickly. A good giveaway is to see what the fishermen are doing if you see a whole load of long tails descending upon an anchorage or some uh, little safe haven you know that they've got some insider information so best to keep an eye out on what they're doing. When you're at anchor really uh, make sure you've got your snubber on to protect your chain pulling and snapping away on your windlass and your on your bow but of course be ready to take that off in an emergency yeah just just get ready really um, take anything off the deck that might blow away yep put Millie below deck for instance remove her little seat and all the cushions anything that, that could blow off because you could get 40 50 knots just coming through quite quickly and be ready at the helm I think it's uh, it's quite prudent as well to at least be ready with the engine yes. to maybe have the engine on when it starts to hit 40 knots and it's sustained 40 knots uh, you might want to think about getting the engine on just to take some strain off 
uh, the anchor and also in case something worse happens like the anchor snaps yeah and you have to watch out for other boats it's one of the reasons we always go on about people anchoring too close it's not necessary if it's not necessary don't do it our anchor may may snap their anchor may snap yes. so when these big things come in and you are too close it it can become quite frightening uh, when you're out at sea really it's a case of uh, batting down the hatches and reducing sail uh, keeping an eye on the wind see how uh, quickly that wind builds up because if it does build up and it's sustained 40 knots and it's going up to 45 knots and then maybe to 50 knots or more you might want to start thinking about putting out a drogue anchor there's obviously various storm tactics out there which uh, you know you can read more into yeah we, we have a staysail as you know on Esper so it can act as a storm jib which is great we haven't got to hank something on or do anything like that we can just just put a little bit of staysail out and that gives us some stability there but of course with um, with ocean passages you can get the first three days pretty well sorted you can see what weather systems are coming through and where they're going after five days you've then got to rely on getting your information while you're at sea so sat phones and various other kinds of communication um, and if you've got something big coming if you've got a cyclone or a hurricane coming you well, have to duck out of that area yeah again quick. there are certain tactics you can employ yeah. uh, when it comes to dodging very very big storms and it's to do with the cycle of the storms in the northern hemisphere as you probably know a, a hurricane will move in an anti-clockwise direction so depending on your position within uh, uh, of that uh, hurricane or cyclone will depend on which way you turn and again there's lots of information out there to yeah. read up on that a bit more a rule of thumb if you can on the indian ocean is to head towards the equator because that's where everything dies down just around either side of the equator but it you know, depends where you are hmm. what the situation is i'm just trying to think what we did uh when we were running with some pretty nasty weather across the indian ocean yeah. Well, the problem we, we had, of course, is that we didn't have a working headsail. Yeah. So we were relying on yeah. the mainsail, which, when you're running downwind, it's actually easier to handle the boat when you're running with the, the headsail rather than the mainsail. So that was a bit dangerous, that was, wasn't it? So we it rigged was, up the preventer. Yeah. So the preventer is a line that runs from the end of the boom to the front of the boat and then to the back of the boat, which just stops the boom from uh, jibing. And then of course there's heaving to as well, yeah. which is where you purposely back the sails and uh, rather than running with a squall, perhaps you turn the boat round and face into it. And of course this will give the appearance that the squall will pass more quickly because you're not moving with it, you're actually pointing against it. Um, so if circumstances permit and you have the sea space, then maybe just heaving to uh, could be a good option because it, uh, it allows you a bit of time to relax and it also allows time for the school to pass over more quickly. Yeah, but of course the general rule for all sailing is if in doubt, reef. Absolutely. So we have Adnan coming in in the afternoon. In the meantime, I've got to clean the boat because she is filthy. make a new uh, coupling connection which is which one these two both these of two. those yeah. yeah and then this one right here also leak you see you can do that on the pontoon no i have to do it in, in, in the workshop okay okay in uh, maybe in two hours coming back here make sure tomorrow you can leave the <laughs> with the with the fridge okay well, a few minutes ago i had a very nice quiet tidy boat Little compressor running. I, I, I think it's pressurizing the fridge, I'm not entirely sure. But uh, I hadn't plugged into shore power, so I've had to run the generator to provide power to run this little thing. It's a mess. It's six o'clock, I'm sunburned. Decks are clean, so that's something. I'm in the middle of an oil change, ran out of oil, and um, yeah, I'm hoping Adnan is going to be finishing up here soon. It's been a very long day, but we're getting stuff done, which is really good. Well, I'm back at anchor. 
uh, left this morning, it was all good. And in fact, I got the help of Crimson Tide, that's Fee and William. They are one of our oldest sets of Patreons and they're based in Talaga and uh, we finally got to meet them. Really, really lovely couple. Fee and William, great to meet you and thank you very much for helping me out of the marina this morning. Uh, it was a little bit windy, but fortunately the wind was uh, on our side, so it was pretty straightforward, but it's good to know that there are decent people out there to, to help out at any time. So thanks guys. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you very much for coming along with us and we hope you enjoyed the vlog. Normally at this stage, we'd be saying, see you next week. But in fact, it's a bit of a surprise going on here because tomorrow we're going to start a week's worth of daily vlogs. Our patrons put lots of questions to us with lots of topics and we're going to take one subject each day and talk about it in a little more detail. So those are going to be up from tomorrow. Do come along, do comment and do subscribe to make sure that you get notifications that we have uploaded these specials and anything else that we may upload. You need, you need to be a subscriber and you need to hit that notification bell. So please do that and we look forward to seeing you. It's freezing here in London and I'm having a rum. Just wanted to say if you do like what we're doing, you can always send us a couple of quid for a rum. We have a rum fund and we also have supporters who support us regularly on Patreon. So if you do like what we're doing, do drop us a line and maybe consider supporting us. As it is, for now, we'll see you tomorrow.